coming soon to the Los Santos Convention Center, it's Mike Andrews. Understand, Understand that it's okay to be poor. There need to be poor people. We rich are the yin, you are the yang. We need you. He's changed millions of lives with his book, Rags Are Riches. Now hear Mike Andrews live. Mr. Andrews, I I've had a run of bad luck, and I was wondering if the state could help me get back on my feet. This is the negative kind of self-obsessed and greedy talk that doesn't help anyone. My program will teach you a new outlook on life. Instead of complaining about being poor, enjoy it. Watch TV. Don't vote. Who cares? But I'm homeless. You've got it all wrong. Society doesn't owe you anything. The government has better things to worry about, like killing innocent people. You already have everything you need, so enjoy your life. Uh, do, do I really have to explain this one? Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is the recently remastered... Oh, uh, okay recently updated open world game that introduced us to the sprawling city of Los Santos for the very first time. In the vein of classic films like Boys in the Hood and Menace to Society, the story follows a predominantly black cast as they navigate urban American life during the height of the crack epidemic. In our first essay, we examined Rockstar's magnum opus, GTA V, a tale of coercion, greed, and guilt that serves as scathing criticism of modern American culture. Although embedded with many socio-political and philosophical truths, comparatively, it does not go nearly as hard as its predecessors. GTA 4's anti-capitalist message tells the tale of a Yugoslavian freedom fighter and the violent choices he and many other Eastern European immigrants were forced to make after the end of the Cold War. It highlights the loneliness, desperation, and rage of those liberated by American military intervention. In both videos, we discuss how the creators of this groundbreaking series, although born into considerable privilege, used their bourgeois upbringing to create politically revolutionary art, which was then commodified by their parasitical parent company, Take-Two Interactive. Although technically part of a different universe, 2004's GTA San Andreas still serves as a prequel to these titles. No, I'm not going to prove that CJ is Franklin's dad. It goes much deeper than that. Lots of cheap guns coming into America since the fall of the wall, Carl. Regardless of personal politics, we can all agree that there's a certain satisfying element to this series that keeps us coming back time and time again. It's truly cathartic. But the thing is, in every other game, you're an anti-hero, a criminal fighting other criminals. The cops are there to stop you from committing crimes. The FIB and IIA might be corrupt, but the boys in blue are just doing their job. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is the only game where the police are the villains. To fully understand the subtext of Grand Theft Auto, we have to look at the timeline and real-world synchronicities that the story alludes to. Carl Johnson was born in 1968, during the height of the Civil Rights Movement, the same year Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. After this horrific act of far-right terrorism against peaceful American citizens, independent organizations began to form in urban areas with the goals of protecting, uplifting, and liberating their communities, by any means necessary. Such groups included the Black Panther Party, the Nation of Gods and Earths, and the Community Revolutionary Interparty Service, or CRIPS. Based on the infamous Los Angeles street gang, the Grove Street families sought to develop unified peace and prosperity until the influx of crack in 1985. Man, Grove Street ain't even no real gang no more, homie. They perpetrators. Now they even know. Shit changes. And this shit changes everybody, man. Even OGs want a slice of this. Their loss of power directly coincides with the principal decision to avoid this incredibly destructive yet lucrative drug. You put a gun to a brother's head, brother's gonna do what he's told. They're forced into the game by corrupt police officer Frank Tenpenny, who runs the local crash unit. Community Resources Against Street Hoodlums was established in 1979 as a way to militarize police forces against any and all attempts at black American independence. While aggressive programs like this were being created at home, the CIA was busy staging coups and stealing valuable resources abroad. Mike Terreno is the government agent funding the global battle against communism by getting Americans addicted to cocaine. With the Haitians and Cubans out of the picture thanks to Tommy Versetti, Terreno's loco syndicate is free to smuggle in drugs directly from Panama, which was, of course, invaded in 1989 to support, you guessed it, far-right insurgents. My connections in Panama can get us all the product we need, untouched. But you gotta arrange the market. If you're still confused, here's a diagram that illustrates the situation brought to you by The Simpsons. As we move into 92, 
Yeah, pretty much. The U.S. government had finally sold enough crack to end the Cold War. Great job! This forcibly cemented capitalism as the only viable financial system for burgeoning nations and created a worldwide network of exploitation where everything from drugs to weapons to human beings could be sold to the highest bidder. Having just returned from a five-year hiatus in Liberty City, the self-proclaimed God-fearing, peace-loving man of the people is met by Officer Tenpenny, who immediately robs him and threatens him with a murder charge. Eager to represent for his set, CJ is then recruited to rob a white supremacist gun nut. Come to think of it, all gun nuts in America are white supremacists. Uh, in, in the game. Works well in a crowded area. Terrorist! Communist! Damn eco-warrior! I'm exercising my rights! Chew on this, you commie bastard! Pacifism ain't my bag! I'll teach you regret! You just picked on God's best friend! Guns in San Andreas are handled very differently than they are in the HD universe. While GTA V pays homage to the 1997 North Hollywood shootout with an ever-expanding arsenal of high-powered weapons, here is a tasteful and almost honorable exhibit that's dedicated to them at the LA Police Museum. GTA 4 shows the other side of the Second Amendment coin, with its thriving black market. This game lies somewhere in between, showcasing both the legal and illegal outcomes of personal gun ownership. At Ammunition, one can purchase about 60 rounds from anywhere from $300 to $4,500, depending on the weapon. If that seems steep, a trip to the hospital only costs 100 bucks, so you might as well go start a gang war and steal a strap. Or you can seek out the dozens of locations where guns are just hidden in plain sight. The cops drop off boxes of guns in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, they, wow. you know, it's, it's a whole setup. So not only do our heroes have to deal with cops, feds, and rival gangs, we have the world's mafias chomping at the bit for a piece of the pie. The mission Just Business finds Big Smoke and CJ confronting some Russian mobsters who are infiltrating their operations. Now all my life I've been told to fear the Russians, but I ain't never even met them. Then the wall comes down and we all supposed to be friends. Five minutes later my cousin gets laid out by some Rusky fresh off the boat. In this unused audio track, we actually hear the Russians refer to the GSF as which I think is a derogatory reference to the Cossack coal mining city that served as a Russian-occupied stalwart of third world independence for over a hundred years. Check out this badass statue of Alexander II they have in their town square. Pause to read. Regardless of intent, the city of Shakti is a perfect example of the sweeping liberal policies that led to the financial collapse and dissolution of the USSR. The whole country went to shit. You know, we try hard to put a lid on it, but that idiot Gorbachev with his little strawberry in his forehead, he gave away the crown jewels. Still, they got their, you know, their boy in the White House. That was nice. Anyway, reuniting the families is one of the most challenging missions in the game, and much like GTA 4's Three Leaf Clover, contains deep political connotations. Inspired by the Watts gang truce, the meeting mimics the watershed 1992 armistice between Crips and Bloods that occurred just days before the Rodney King verdict and subsequent uprising. After committing a series of ruthless assassinations, Some young journalist out there is trying to get a name for himself. He doesn't know how the streets work, that he's supposed to report what he's supposed to report. Carl is finally introduced to the incomparable Mike Torino. You ain't nothing but a fucking Yayo dealer anyway, Torino. Shut up and sit down. What, you think I'm a drug dealer? And what, you think you're a crusader for good? Do you have any idea what's going on? Any idea whatsoever? Do you? Do you? Nah, I pay as little attention to things as possible. Do not be a fucking smart ass with me. I work for a government agency. It is not important which one. I will try not to confuse you. Yes, when we last met, I was involved in battling threats in Latin America by any means necessary. That does not make me a drug dealer. Now, the money that we raised, the friends that we won over, have helped us immeasurably in our overseas interests. Want some more? Some traders from another department think they can help the overseas situation by financing militaristic dictators in exchange for arms contracts. Hey, ain't that exactly what you do? Well, kind of, but we get to pick our dictators. Degenerates that we can control. We try to stay the hell away from these guys with principles, because that just muddies the waters. How about this one? Over here, you got all the scumbags inside the country. And over here, you got all the scumbags outside the country. And me and my colleagues, we're the fucking pivot. Keep the government in work. So yeah, this is pretty much how it goes for the rest of the game. 
Carl is blackmailed into doing all sorts of terrible things at the whim of psychopathic, imperialist middlemen, which eventually leads to the release of his imprisoned brother Sweet. Immediately on some revolutionary suicide shit, Sweet rebukes the family's newfound wealth and returns home to clean up the neighborhood. What you mean, man? What's mine is yours, and you know that! You never did get it, did you, Carl? I need to go check on things in the hood. Man, that's the problem. You always a perpetrator, running from what's real. Hey, man, shit's fucked up there. You don't want to be in the hood. No, that's exactly where I want to be. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas tells the tale of dignified land protectors and the challenges they face as late-stage capitalism puts a stranglehold on their communities. It stresses the value of solidarity and justice over status and wealth, and very clearly states that the global capitalist war on communism will be the undoing of America, if not the entire planet. Thanks for watching. In closing, we leave you with yet another classic TV ad that should put a nail in this proverbial coffin. Good night and good luck. Put your skills to work in the military. I was on the streets in a gang shooting people and running drugs. Now I'm making something of myself. I kill people and run drugs for the CIA. In this job, you not only help yourself, you help your country. Only in the military would a teenager be given responsibilities like driving a nuclear submarine, maneuvering a tank, or dropping high ordnance explosives. Make a change for yourself in the military. I was in college constantly getting into pointless fights I didn't understand about nebulous concepts and belief systems. I got tired of arguing about what's right, so I dropped out of college and joined up. Now I know I'm right in the military. Learn confidence. I was having fantasies about stabbing people. Now I can do it for my country. Live the military life. Positions are unexpectedly vacant every day. In fact, I'm about to give up my well-paid job as a voiceover actor in order to sign up and be shouted at by a lot of sexually confused skinheads. I want excitement and what could be more exciting than shitting yourself while getting shot at in the jungle certainly beats sitting in this booth all day be number one turn your life around in the military